everybody so i just wanted to give my thoughts on the recent video that chris posted uh where he's trying to explain away the last two years of him being in prison and give my thoughts on what i think may be going on with some of the things that he has said um what what may be actually going on and that kind of thing so uh first and foremost in the video, and by the way, I'm not going to be doing like commentaries on every single video Chris puts out. I only need to say something if there's something significant that needs to be analyzed. I say that because as I sat down to do this, I saw he put up some kind of Rosanna Rose Chew, whatever it's called, Christmas story or something like that. I don't need to weigh in on the whatever nonsense is going through his brain, just the significant developments. Anyway, so... The first thing I wanted to comment on is he's, and now we know that Chris's understanding of the world around him and events in his life is very simple and very childlike. And uh, the, um, you know, in this most recent video, he says that he was found not guilty in a court of law. Well, we know that he was not found not guilty. His case was dismissed, and that's a very different thing. Uh, a case can be thrown out by the court and not, uh, and, and the person still, the, the guilt or innocence of the person in question still be up in the air. So I think he just doesn't understand the difference and he thinks that, you know, he, he thinks that he can kind of like the, like the defiant child that he is, he thinks he can pull the wool over our eyes or maybe we don't all actually know what, uh, know the circumstances around the case dismissal and his release and all of that. Well, here's the thing. Uh, this is what I think has been going on behind the scenes. I think cases in, in things like this, I've said it before and I'll say it again, you know, if you go, if you look at the uh, prison, the when it comes to things like sexual assault cases, for example, which is what this was, when it comes to uh, cases, or sexual misconduct, I should say. When it comes to cases of sexual misconduct, on a scale from 1 to 10, uh, with, you know, 5 being R. Kelly and 10 being Ted Bundy and Jeffrey Dahmer, uh, the, co the court system of any, uh, any state regularly deals with like 7s and 8s and 9s. And a Chris, as fascinated as we all are by Chris Chan, as far as they're concerned, Chris Chan ranks like a point zero 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 five, so he is a just a blip on their radar. And because of that, because all courts are severely overworked, they will often um, broker plea deals with their uh, broker plea deals with their uh, less uh, less difficult or less concerning um, charges to just try to get them out the door, free up the space in the jail, and, you know, keep things moving along so that they can turn their attention to those seven, eights, and nines that I was just referring to. And again, as fascinated as we are with Chris, this is not anything at all interesting to them. And so I would imagine what actually happened, uh, if I recall correctly, the sequence of events went, Chris's uh, charges were upgraded to a felony. Chris was released from prison, from jail. Chris, the charges against Chris were dismissed. What I think happened was that when they got Chris in jail, they were dealing with a defiant child, and they uh, they had to, as, as evidenced by the fact that he had to, as he put it, had to be taken out of court to be educated on courtroom procedure which is the kind of thing you would explain, the kind of way you would explain something to a child that's acting unruly in court uh, and needs to take the situation seriously. But I think what happened was they probably scared him into taking a plea deal, which scaring him was probably the only thing that they could do. Chris has said, says in this most recent video that um, if he... Um, uh, that the reason he was the only reason he was kept in jail for two years is because they were looking for somewhere to put him, and now they found somewhere to put him, and he's doing a lot better, as he put it. So that um, you know that would of course beg the question: Well, if you were found not guilty, why were they looking for a place to put you? 
and obviously because he doesn't understand the difference between dismissal and not guilty. But anyway, so as we consider that, I think probably what happened was they've been trying to deal with him at the misdemeanor level for a year. He's been uncooperative. They upgraded it as a felony to scare the crap out of him. Uh, upgraded it to a felony to scare the crap out of him, to get him to understand uh, or to get him to play ball. And then they probably just offered him a plea deal where if he will agree to uh, live in a group home, he'll agree to you know live in a group home and do X, Y, and Z, then uh, they will dismiss his case. And that would explain why he was released and then the case was dismissed. It's like the group home can say, yes, he's in our care now. We've got this under control make, you know, make good on the plea deal. And so that's my best guess as to what I think happened, uh, what's been going on in the background. So that's, uh, that is good, uh, at the very least. Uh, so there's, uh, Th that said, there's still some concerning things. People have noticed that he's been going back to the Sonichu Temple, and it may be Either that, I, I seriously doubt that Barb is still there, I, and I especially because I feel like if Barb would, if Barb were there, Chris would probably post pictures of himself with her as like a fuck you to everybody that thought he was in some kind of trouble or something, or that he couldn't be around her. But um, the, uh, you know, the, the simple reality is he's, uh, she doesn't appear to be in the picture anymore. She could be in a nursing home or hospice care or could have even passed away. And what I thought was interesting is how Chris talked about her entirely in the past tense, saying things like, he talks about, doesn't refer to her as his mom, he calls her Barb, and talks about her in the past tense. Um, and so that made me think that she may have passed away. But a friend of mine actually had a very interesting point, which was he said, you know, it may be that, she is. She's been removed from Chris's life to for such to such a degree now that she is no longer real to him. And I think that's an interesting point for a very simple person like Chris, lacking who's you know lacking a certain amount of object permanence. His mind may have severed the relationship altogether now that she's just that far removed from him at this point. As far as him, pardon me. As far as him going back to the Sonichu Temple, it may be that he's doing that under uh, supervision, and it may also be that whatever group home he's living in only has, like, uh, I think the term is a sundown policy, that, you know, you're if you're judged to not be too much of a danger, you can go out and go about your business during the day. You're just required to be back at the um, the institution or whatever it is by sundown, that sort of thing. So it could be something like that. What is interesting to me, though, is his this woman. He taught he identified the woman that he's been seen in public with as Flutter, and um, I don't. We still don't know what his actual relationship with her is. But he said that she is a friend that uh, they got in touch, got in touch with him while he was in prison, and that's all he wants to say about that. And he calls her Flutter because she likes Fluttershy. So one of two things is going on there. Either this this woman is <clears throat> going to be, you know, the next um, the next iteration of Isabella Janky or some other woman that wants to get close to Chris for whatever purpose, or she uh, well, or she could somehow, by the grace of God, be his girlfriend, which I still can't quite fathom. Uh, or she could actually still be a social worker. It could be that she was he. Uh, what he's referred to, you know, like he's he's calling her Flutter because she likes Fluttershy. That could be something that she is his social worker told him in prison to establish, you know, in jail to establish some kind of rapport or something like that. That said, this is Chris, and the worst outcome is usually what happens. I'm still waiting for the other shoe to drop, where we find out that. Chris has been kicked out of that group home for being a, uh, you know, for being absolutely ridiculous, like he was kicked out of that uh, mental institution for performing an exorcism and things like that. And so, you know, we just wait for the next shoe to drop. Uh, got him. Sorry, I'm getting stuffed up. Uh, we just wait for the next shoe to drop, and that's where it is. That's what I think is going on behind the scenes. 
Um, but most most likely, like, like I said, most likely the felony charge was an attempt to goad him into accepting a, some kind of plea bargain or something like that. Because I promise you, he's been going in he, for. I promise you, for you know, a lot of this time, he was probably going into it ranting and raving about how he's Jesus Christ and he's. Well, I don't think he was doing the Jesus Christ thing because I think anyone that looks at him uh, with a threatening, just so much as looks at him with a menacing look could scare that shit right out of him, uh, make him shut up about that. But he's probably been going on thinking he's innocent and blah, 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 and wanting to like, thinking he can prove his innocence in court and, you know, because this is all just a, for him, this is all just a movie that's playing in his mind. So uh, it probably was to just try to get him to accept some kind of uh, plea agreement or something like that to go into a group home. So that's what I think. Like I said, I'm not going to comment on every single weird video he does. I just, you know, I, I, I want to reserve my commentary for when there's something uh, of note to actually address. Anyway, those are my thoughts.